They just don't know their facts. How many times have you heard that? How many times have you said that? I know as a classroom teacher and as a coach, I've heard and said it. I've said it about my students. I've said it to the students coming in my grade level. I've said it to the students leaving my grade level. I've said it to parents, I've said it to administration. Fact fluency has been an issue in schools all across the country, different school settings. It's, it's just an issue. And what do we do? We try to come up with solutions that will help them memorize. And so we do chants. I was always really good at the chant and the song. Um, I remember a rap CD I had one time that was really interesting. Uh, we do time tests, which just cause anxiety and stress the kids out. What if there was a great way that we could assess and teach math facts in a way that makes sense? Well, guess what there is. So take a look at some of the ways we can do that. So this is based off of the work of Arthur Baruti, who's found that there are really three phases to understanding math facts. You got phase one, which was counting all the objects with your fingers or marks on a paper. You've seen that students, a student that counts one, two, three, four, and seems to take forever. Then you got phase two, where students are using reasoning strategies. They're using known facts to reason the answer and they're finding information. And then he said phase three was mastery, where students recall it automatically. They can come up with that fact quickly and they have a way of understanding. But what I'm seeing here from his research is the fact that we have to give students opportunities to learn those reasoning strategies. They gotta do something in order to find those patterns and those relationships. And I think that's where we miss that little piece sometimes. We jump straight into phase one, where we've got students counting on, then we just jump into to mastery and memorization. And sometimes we forget this phase too. So Common Core even goes a step forward and says that there are three methods, they say, three levels of students understanding their math facts, their strategies, and they're pretty similar for addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, but I kind of broke them down for you. So level one is the same. That's the student that's counting every single thing, and they start from one every single time. You've seen that kid, and a lot of times when we start talking about math facts, this is the area that makes people really nervous because they get nervous that kids are gonna stay here forever. And they can if we don't help them move forward, but we can do that. Level two is where Common Core says we wanna make sure we're pushing every student. So in level two, in addition and subtraction, students are counting on from a given number. So let's say you're trying to find out five plus seven, you put down five cubes and you wanna count seven more, you start from five, as opposed to level one where a student would put down five, they would put down seven, and then they would count from one to find them there's 12. So there's a little bit of difference. They're able to hold a number in their head at level two and they're moving on in that counting sequence. In multiplication division, that's skip counting. That's students who can say two, four, six, or five, 10, 15, which we want students to be able to do. Level three is where we're hitting that mastery. We're using those strategies to solve a problem. So we're making a 10, we're using our doubles facts, or maybe we're using the distributive property of multiplication and we're able to break a fact that's hard into something that's much easier for me to understand. These are the levels we want to work on students. And when we start talking about fluency, if we were to work with students at these levels and provide activities for them, they're going to see those patterns. They're going to make relationships, which is going to lead to mastery and memorization. So what does it look like? You've seen this. I'm sure you have seen this. You have seen students who are drawing all those little circles and all those little dots, and it takes forever. And sometimes they miscount. Well, there's your level one. And if I have a student who's here, I'm gonna work on some counting strategies to help them feel like they can start moving to that level two. And those are some activities I can do with them to help them move forward. In a level two student, you're gonna see stuff like this, okay? So how did you get that? What did you do? I used touch points. You used touch points. So what does that mean that you did? So you went eight, then what did you do? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Notice he started at eight. He didn't have to start all the way from one. He knew he could count up from eight, which is much more efficient than starting from one. And he had a strategy. Then you have your level three. So how would you figure that answer out? Seven plus six is 13, right? How do you know it's 13? Because um, seven, normally seven plus seven is 14, uh -huh. and then you take one from the seven and then it got you to six. So then six plus seven is 13. Wouldn't it be great if our students could do that? If they could take a fact they know, like seven plus seven is 14, 
subtract the extra one and get your math back. Those are level three. That's where we're aiming for students to have mastery, where they have a strategy to solve and they can do it quickly and efficiently. But how do we assess them? Because time tests, as we talked about before, may not give us the most information. And as a teacher, I want my assessment to guide my instruction because that's really what assessment should be. Well, Gina King and Jennifer Bay Williams came up with ways that we can assess students using interview, observations, journaling, and quizzes that's going to give us more information. So things like using progress monitoring prompts to interview students and asking questions at those different levels. How can a number line help you? Um, this student's struggling with this math fact. What strategy would you tell them? And encouraging them based on the level that they are to provide information that's going to help push them to the next level. Or maybe observations where I'm going to see which strategies are my students doing and which strategies are they not using so I know what type of mini lessons to lead small group or whole group instruction. Or even journaling. Maybe I want to have students journal and explain their process to hit that metacognition piece. Well, I can do that using different prompts based on the level that they are that's going to, again, push them to level three, which is what I'm trying to do. What you're seeing here are some resources that are available for you in my Developing Fact Fluency and Assessment e-course. It's 1.5 hours available on my website for only $39 right now, and you would get all these templates available to you to use in your classroom. But I will say, even if you're not going to take my course and you want to look at it, think about how you could use these as you're assessing where your students are in their math facts. Isn't it great that there are some solutions that will teach our students where they are and we can assess them with information that we can actually use to teach and make informed decisions? I'm Jessica Kavinsky. I've been doing professional development for the last eight years and was a classroom teacher for seven before that. And I would love for you to follow my blog if you're interested. I'm new to this whole blogging thing, but I'm really into it and I wanna provide lots of teaching tips that will help you. So follow along and I hope I can help you. If you're interested in more information, please check out my online e-courses. I have a 1.5 hour and a couple six hour courses and I'm working on a few more, but these are great ways for you to practice and learn at your own pace and earn professional development at the same time. I'd love for you to check them out. They're on my website. There's some sample videos. You can purchase it all online or even contact me for a group rate and I'd love to help you out.